is the meaning or definition of human capital human capital refers to the stock of skills ability expertise education and knowledge in a nation at a point of time second physical capital it refers to assets which themselves have been manufactured and are used for production of other goods and services now in the next slide let's discuss the differentiation between physical and human capital so the first basis of differentiation is nature in physical capital it is tangible and can be easily sold in the market like any other commodity whereas in human capital it is tangible built in the body and mind of its owner it is not sold in the market only its service are sold next ownership physical capital has a separate able from its owner whereas human capital is inseparable from its owner third mobility in physical capital it is completely mobilized between the countries except some artificial trade restrictions whereas in human capital it is not perfectly mobile between countries as movement is restricted by nationality and culture the next basis of differentiation is formation it can be built even through imports in physical capital whereas it is done through conscious policy formation or formulation in human capital the last basis of differentiation is benefits in physical capital it creates only private benefit whereas in human capital it creates both private and social benefit so now after discussing the difference let's discuss the meaning of human capital formation human capital formation is a process of adding to the stock of human capital over a period of time after the meaning of human capital formation there are the sources of human capital formation the first one is expenditure on education the education expenditure is an important source of human capital formation as it is the most effective way on enhancing and enlarging a productive workforce in the country nations and individual invest in education with the objective of first increasing their future income second generating technical skills and creating manpower well suited for improving labor productivity and thus sustaining rapid economic development next tending to bring down birth rate which in return brings decline in population growth rate it makes more resources available per person next education also results in social benefits since it also spreads to others the next source of human capital formation is expenditure on health health is another important source of human capital formation a sick laborer without access to medical facility is compelled to abstain from work and there is loss of productivity the various form of health expenditure are preventive medicine curative medicine social medicine provision of clean drinking water sanitation etc next on the job training expenditure regarding on the job training is a source of human capital formation as the return of such expenditure in the form of enhanced labor productivity is more than the cost of it firms spend huge amount on giving on the job trainings to their workers it may be in different forms like a worker may be trained in the firm first itself or under the supervision of a skilled worker or can be sent for off campus training the firms then insist that workers should work for at least some time in dai company so that they can recover the benefits of the enhanced productivity owing to the training the next source is migration people sometimes migrate from one place to another in search of better jobs that fetch them higher salaries than what they may get in their native places it includes migration of people from rural areas to urban areas in india unemployment is the reason for rural urban migration in india and technically qualified people migrate from one country to another in order to get high salaries next expenditure on information people spend to acquire information relating to the labor market and other markets like education health etc for example people seek information regarding salaries and other facilities available in different labor markets so that they can choose the right job expenditure incurred for acquiring information regarding labor markets and other markets like education health and 
have also become an important source of capital formation. Now after discussing the sources of human capital formation, let's discuss the economic growth and state of human capital formation in entire human capital and economic growth. India recognized the importance of human capital in economic growth long ago. The seventh five year plan says human resources development has necessarily to be assigned a key role in any development strategy, particularly in a country with a large population. The following points show clearly the interdependence among the two. First, higher productivity of physical Human capital increases productivity of physical capital as specialized and skilled workers can handle machines or techniques better than the unskilled work. This increased productivity and hence production in leads to economic growth. Second, innovative skills. Human capital facilities innovation of new methods of production and this increase the rate of economic growth in the form of GDP. Higher rate of participation or equality human capital formation leads to a higher employment rate. With increase in employment, the productivity rises. Also increase in employment opportunities also increases the level of income and this helps in reducing inequalities of wealth. Both increase in employment rate and decrease in employment inequalities are pointer of economic development. Bring Positive outlook. The process of human capital formation brings in a positive outlook to the society which is different from orthodox and traditional ways of thinking and hence increases the rate of participation in the workforce causes increase in the level of production. Now the next topic is how India as a knowledge economic. The Indian software industry has been showing an impressive record over the past decade. Entrepreneur, bureaucrats and politicians are now advancing views about how India can transform itself into the knowledge-based economic by using information technology. There have been some instances of villagers using email which are cited as example of such transformation. Likewise, e-governance is being projected as the way of the future. The value of IT depends greatly on the existing level of the economic development. The next slide is related to the problems of human capital formation in India. The main problem of human capital formation in India are first rising population rapidly. Rising population adversely affects the quality of human capital in underdeveloped and developing countries like India. It reduces per head availability of existing facilities like sanitation, employment, drainage, water system, housing, hospitals, education, food supply, nutrition, roads, electricity, etc. Brain drain, migration of highly skilled labor termed as brain drain. This slow down the process of human capital formation in the domestic economy. Next, in efficient of manpower planning there is an inefficient manpower planning in less developed countries and there is no efforts have been made either to raise the standards of education at different stages per to maintain the demand and supply of technical labor force it is a sad reflection on the wastage of human power and skills next long process Long-term process. The process of human development is a long-term policy because skill formation takes time. The process which produces skilled manpower is thus slow. This also lowers our competitiveness in the international market of human capital. Next, high poverty level. A large proportion of the population lives below poverty line and do not have access to basic health and educational facilities. A large section of society cannot afford to get higher education or expensive medical treatment for major diseases. The last topic of this chapter is future prospects. India government consider education a key sector where considerable growth and development is required. Thus, it has some set future prospect for framing its policies. These prospects are discussed below. First, education for all, still a distant dream. Although the education level in India has risen for both adult as well as for youth, 
Still, the number of illiterates in India are as much as the population was at the time of independence. In 1950, when the Constitution of India was passed by the Constituent Assembly, it was noted in the directive principles of the Constitution that government should provide free and compulsory education for all children up to the age of 14 within 10 years from the commencement of the institution. The following factors make education still a distant dream. First, large number of illiterate. Second, inadequate vocate nationalization third gender basis fourth lower rural access level fifth privatization sixth low government expenditure on education so students here your chapters n make sure that you are making notes side by side or you have your ncert textbook open now it's time for your reward question today's question is what are the problems faced by the indian in human capital formation all you have to do is to just comment down your answers and the best answer will be rewarded by us i will be back with my another video till then thank you everyone